Hello and welcome to today's Medica Deep Dive. The topic is sensors, collecting data for monitoring and diagnostics. At Medica, each year, this field is always the most dynamic, reflecting the fast global pace of device research and development and commercialization. I am thrilled to be joined by three leading lights in this field. First off, Christian Robelin is Healthcare Marketing Director for Linksens, a German company with deep foundations in RFID and smart card technology. Jens yeah, Kaus you. is VP at CSEM, a Swiss technology incubator with, believe it or not, actual roots running back to Swiss, Swiss watchmaking. Thank you for joining us. And finally, Professor Dr. Jens Eckstein, he is Chief Physician of Internal Medicine and also Chief Information Officer at University Hospital in Basel, also in Switzerland. Greetings to you all. A bit of housekeeping before we get right to the topic at hand. Uh, within this Zoom chat, uh, within the Zoom meeting, uh, we do have a Q&A function. Um, and it's not the chat function. Uh, you're not actually involved in the meeting itself, but simply as an audience. So the Q&A function allows you to interact with our editorial team working in the background. Um, please, if you already have some questions before we even get started, shoot those across to us or as the conversation develops, something pops uh, in your head, some ideas, uh, some questions you want the, the panel to tackle, send those along and those will be filtered out to us um, uh, during the talk and we can get to those uh, topics individually as the talk progresses. Um, I don't want to waste any more time here. Uh, there's uh, a lot to talk about. Uh, please, uh, Jens Kaus, uh, an introduction of yourself, uh, how you came to be in this position, um, and what uh, CSEM brings to the table today and into the future. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ben, uh, for the introduction. Um, my name is Jens Kraus. I'm uh, I have a background in biomedical engineering from the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich. Uh, started my career in human space flights, already with astronauts monitoring on distance um, the health status of the astronauts. And uh, now uh, for 30 years at CSCM, uh, the Swiss uh, Center of Microelectronics and Microtechnology and heading the business unit of systems with, on one hand, uh, the space technology, on the other hand, the uh, medical device technologies. So uh, probably I try to share my presentation and I hope everybody can see the slide. In full Slides screen. we see full screen would be helpful. Perfect. Okay, does it work? Perfect, looks yeah. great. Okay, probably yes, a, a short introduction at CSEM and who we are. So CSEM is a so-called research and technology organization as in many other countries like the Fraunhofer in Germany or the IMAC in Belgium. So we serve industry with a focus on deep tech and uh, we have a mission to transfer technologies uh, to industry. So we are have no products, we are technology provider and transferring this to, uh, to the business, either via creating startups or to existing companies. And uh, so our, our business model is twofold. And uh, as Ben already has introduced, so our origin is in the Swiss watchmaking. And we are speaking as well today about wearables. And the watch is a wearable of the very first hour. And that's the reason why I joined, when I joined CSEM in the late 90s, uh, we started this activity on uh, remote human vital signs monitoring. Um, and which is well aligned with um, the watchmaking industry as well. Everything what is small, precise, that's our DNA. 
everything what is complex, portable, low power, and multidisciplinary. So that's a little bit uh, the alignment of the medical device technologies with um, with uh, our DNA in in watchmaking. And uh, when CSM was founded in the 80s, this was when the Swiss watch industry was in a crisis and they merged three research labs to help the Swiss watch industry with technology, with innovation. And that's one of the reasons why still today, it's a very important um, business for CSEM to support our shareholders from the Swiss watchmaking. So as I said, we our business model is twofold. We have on one hand, the applied research, and that's the reason why we have the support of the Swiss government as well, uh, the public funding to develop new building blocks through this public funding. And on the other hand, having this tech transfer, so valor valorizing what we are developing with, um, with the industry, creating jobs and uh, creating high-tech business, if possible in Switzerland, but throughout Europe as well. So uh, regarding the, yeah, the wear tech, so we have started as already said in the late 90s, this technology and um, uh, yeah, working on remote patient monitoring uh, for many years and certified ISO 13485 in 2014. And today we are located at the uh, campus of the University Hospital here in Bern to be closer to the patients, to be closer to the clinicians. And yeah, the focus was always the same. Uh, everything what is sensing and processing on the body and then sending the vitals to uh, um, to a remote station. And here are only some tech transfer success stories. So as you can see, I do not want to go into details here, but it's really going from established companies, big companies like GE or Decathlon to uh, startups uh, like Ava Him Women Health, like uh, Biospectral to spin-offs from CSCM like Actia. And um, it's really uh, that we are not only doing startup companies, but uh, we are flexible regarding the collaboration, what we are doing uh, with our uh, partners. So some uh, technologies, uh, well, everything started in the late 90s already with the activity profiling, a little bit different than the activity tracking, as most of you probably know with these activity trackers. So still today, we are working uh, on these technologies for gait analysis in for the pharma industry and fault detection, sleep quality in different form factors, in different um, uh, body locations. It's something we had started with and have a library which we are out licensing today to the customers. And very important, we have been the first working on the heart rate monitoring at the wrist. Uh, the base patent was uh, coming from CSCM, combining inertial sensing with optical sensing, integrating this into a wrist device. And this we have developed further during the last 20 years with new chip, which we are developing ourselves. Uh, extracting other vitals like um, uh, respiration rate, uh, SpO2, atrial fibrillation, continuous blood pressure me measurement. It's always based on the same platform, which is the PPG, and this is more than, than RIM. And uh, this is the example of this continuous blood pressure monitoring. Today, there are two um, startups commercializing this technology, a wristband measuring continuously 24-7 blood pressure, and biospectral with an app uh, via the smartphone camera measuring as well, a medical grade uh, blood pressure measurement, um, which is then given back to the user. And we have a technology, a uh, property technology called cooperative sensors instead of uh, the gel electrodes, which we know from the holters or for EEGs, we have dry electrodes, which we have developed integrating everything into the electrode. So having an active electrode and you can extend this to hundreds of, uh, of uh, electrodes which are on the body and then afterwards extracting different uh, vital signs. So the future here is really what we see uh, going further with, for example, these um, dry electrodes for different use cases, such as um, uh, EEG monitors, which are continuously long-term, uh, which are integrated into a headband, into glasses, well, into well objects which are used every day. 
and as well having this uh, extended to other vitals like uh, monitoring or imaging even the organs inside with an electro impedance tomograph where we have 32 of these dry electrodes and extracting then different vitals as well uh, like the pulmonary artery pressure and having different signals together. So this is only a short overview of what we are doing regarding the uh, biomedical uh, technologies here at CSCN. Great, thank you so much. That gives us a very good overview of uh, what the institution uh, is all about and what you're providing uh, to everybody involved in this area. Dr. Jens Eckstein, um, you have uh, many hats uh, within the institution there. Uh, please tell us a, a little bit more about yourself, uh, your background and, and your current role uh, within the institution and, and how you are implementing uh, sensor technology at the moment. Thanks, Ben, for the introduction. So I'm more than happy to do so. And um, with Jens Kaus, I share more than our first name. We basically share our um, really our passion for, for mobile sensors and, and how that comes to be, I, I would like to explain in, in a short um, uh, explanation. See that um, I'm a, by training, I'm a, I'm a um, fellow for internal medicine and cardiologist, and uh, I've been working almost ever since in, in that role as well uh, until today. So, so I'm continuously working as a, as a clinician, uh, looking after patients and, and doing that with a lot of passion. Um, and doing so, it's uh, it's been obvious that you can do better, like in many other fields as well. And and uh, and uh, from a, I would say intrinsic motivation to use technology and and the curiosity, I I started about a decade ago. That was with the iPhone 4S um, to use the uh, the camera and the LED electrode to uh, to extrapolate the the PPG signal that that Jens uh, just talked about as well. And, um, and we use that together with a company from Germany to detect atrial fibrillation. And, um, and for me, this was so obviously to, to that this should be a, uh, an application that should be available for everybody that, um, that we just um, did the trial and, and published it. And, and uh, lucky, that was probably a lucky punch because that's uh, now available everywhere and it's in all the guidelines and the medical guidelines. Um, and it's used worldwide, and it was very satisfying to see that we really can help people with something as simple as a good software on their smartphones, and they don't need any extra machines and any other equipment. So, so that was how I sort of slided not only into the medical field, but into the uh, the technical and, and IT area. And uh, and then it was obvious that that of course uh, after the smartphones came the smart watches wristbands whatsoever and it was very clear that that you can use that for a lot more than only uh, AF detection and um, and when we were digging into that um, subject we we I mean my team around in in Basel who do most of the work. Um, immediately found out that there is not really a system at that time that um, matches the medical standards. So, so uh, there were a lot of uh, consumer pr products that were really far developed and pretty good. But uh, for example, considering da data privacy, reliability, precision, there was no such thing. And uh, and that is why we uh, why we did workshops with other companies and and then in, we developed an in-house system together with a startup from Zurich um, that allowed us to link any Bluetooth um, compatible devices into our system and and process the data on premises or then share it with the companies that were collaborating with us but always with uh, the consent of our patients. And that system was pretty successful, still running. We use that in trials when we do validation trials for, for companies. And, um, and just now we uh, were the first in the world to be able to implement this into um, standard Cisco access points um, that, that are Bluetooth uh, compatible now as well. And we are now trying to make that um, you know, as, a, as a normal Bluetooth environment for the whole hospital till the end of the next year. So, so in the hospital, I'm a little bit the IT guy. Outside the hospital, I'm a little bit the physician, and uh, and that's probably where I stand. So, so I'm very much interested if you would give it a name in in applied e-health. Um, coming my motivation coming from the fact that we really want to uh, provide uh, the the best technology to our patients and make their life more uh, more 
agreeable and, and, and better um, and the treatment that we do probably a little bit more efficient and I see a lot of room uh, to improve there and this is why I'm so happy you know to be in a network together with people like like the ones here in this round and and, and others in, in his in, in, um, in industry um, because then I think in the end of the day we can uh, really um, implement this kind of technology in the hospital when it's when it's meeting our standards and uh, and the patients and um, all my colleagues uh, will profit from it because we have to make that that job a little bit more attractive and and um, and medicine a little bit more efficient and comfortable for our patients. That's in a nutshell where I how I would describe my position. A very good nutshell. Thank you very much. Very clear. Uh, speaking of uh, commercialization and uh, profit uh, and who profits, uh, we are <laughs> going to speak to you now, Christelle. Uh, the as a software, uh, com uh, as a hardware company, I, as I said at the Medica, this field of of sensor technology is extremely dynamic. Um, the the challenges faced by you and in industry to actually develop this, commercialize it, uh, and and sell it to the market in, in such a dynamic market must be challenging. Um, please tell us a little bit about about yourself and the company and uh, kind of the status quo at the moment and and where you see things going in the future. Yes, thanks for the introduction. So I'm, I'm Christelle Robin. So I'm the marketing director for the healthcare business at Linksense. Um, I joined Linksense so two years ago um, to um, build and execute uh, the, the diversification strategy into the, the healthcare market. Um, and uh, I have some, so my background is technical. So I'm an engineer and uh, I work so more than 10 years in the, in the medical device industry. In different uh, sectors, so in uh, sleep apnea device, in virtual diagnostics uh, platform, and um, in the drug delivery device uh, platform. So um, I'm, I would like to share some my presentation to uh, to to present so the the companies for LinkedIn. Please. Uh, So do you see my screen? See so your screen, we're not at full screen on the slides yet. Okay. It's it trying. Work. It's good? There we go. We're getting okay. there. Perfect. Good. So um, I think so everybody is listening uh, to, to this call today. So uh, as a LinkedIn product, um, but don't know that. So because so we are providing in, in fact so connectors and uh, RFID antenna for smart card application. Um, you can find it in, for example in payment card. So uh, we are a global um, uh, contract development manufacturer so for smart card application. We produce in high volume. So we produce billion of, uh, of uh, products so every year. Uh, to, to the world population, um, partner with big names that you, you, you can see uh, on the screen. We are a French company, so not German, so we are a French company with operation uh, in Europe and in Asia. And uh, um, historically we served so, um, uh, eight markets, so that need a component for transactions, secure transaction, for example, so as I mentioned, so um, payment card, we provide us a SIM card, um, um, and uh, also passports, so um, applications. So, and um, more recently, so we, we decided to diversify into the healthcare market. And Chris, for I, that- could I, could I stop you real quickly? Um, you, yeah. You're in the presentation uh, management mode. Could you switch your screen to the full screen of the actual slide? There's a lot of information on there. I just uh, want to make sure. Yeah, that's, that's the, this one, yes. Do you see the- it's not in full screen, however. Okay, strange. Okay. So in display settings, indeed. Yeah. Yes. Is it mm -hmm. working now? Perfect. Thank you oh, so much. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. No problem. Okay. So as I mentioned, so as we uh, we are um, several so now the, the healthcare market, so we have also so a specific um, uh, plant with uh, with clean clean rooms and um, and we are so. Uh, ISO 13 for 485 certified to serve this specific market. And um, 
we invest only in roll to roll, so manufacturing capabilities. For more than 40 years, we manufacture fle flexible electronic solution that includes so flexible PCB component assembly, including a, a bare chip assembly, for example. We have screen printing capabilities. And more recently, we also invest a lot uh, into uh, some uh, specific uh, capability less black surface functionalization in microfluidic to serve by sensors applications. So really interesting field. We also invested into high tech converting. So more recently, and we are capable to produce uh, um, complex patch made of uh, uh, multiple layers that can include, for example, hydrogel, that can also include microfluidics, uh, that can um, um, also include so uh, screen printed electrodes, so quite complex patches. So we talked today, and we also uh, leverage our, our expertise into connectivity, so that we can provide, you know, so um, um, for example, a low Bluetooth energy communication, and we also have so full in-house capability to produce our RFID solutions. So that's the capabilities of Lixens as an industrial so, um, um, contract manufacturer. And more specifically to this, uh, to this topic today, so we developed so a sensor internally. So we are capable to produce so ECG, EEG, EMG sensor based on screen printing uh, uh, capability. Based uh, on um, uh, piezoelectric ink deposition, we are able also to, pro to produce a pressure sensor, temperature sensor. And also um, really interesting. So as I mentioned, we are focusing a lot on the development of biosensor, electrochemical um, based biosensor. We can also um, analyze some, uh, some biomarker or some measure pH. And for sure, as we can assemble components so we can integrate every kind of sensor. Um, so as you mentioned, yes, so inertia measure, you need or optical temperature sensor, so any kind of a um, sensor component. And so we decided so to leverage our, our competency into flexible electronics uh, stick to skin uh, stick to skin capability to address uh, three uh, three uh, applications. So the biosensor for point of care testing, the stick to skin wearable for patient monitoring, and the, the track and trace solution, and all that to support the, the connected health. And uh, I would like to showcase you today one application. So we are uh, manufacturing for a big player in the cardiac monitoring. Um, it's, a, it's a patch, so um, developed for real-time detection of arrhythmia. So it's a medical grade patch. So that's important to mention. mention. And uh, we, we made a lot of, uh, of effort to improve the comfort for the patient, the, the, the wear time, um, to, to make it waterproof and all that in less than one year. So because we capitalize on our, as I mentioned, expertise on developing some dispatches and uh, due to our um, roll to roll capability, we are able to manufacture it in million, in million, in million range. So every year we are manufacturing millions, uh, millions of patches. Um, and we also try to support a customer by providing you know, a proprietary patch platform because we advanced a lot into patch, uh, in patch uh, capabilities and we are able you know, to, to offer a um, uh, comprehensive uh, um, uh, portfolio with different material for, uh, for example, for different wear type, skin type, uh, stretchable or not stretchable material. Um, to be able, you know, to clips uh, to clips this uh, this housing on, on the patch, and or I, as I already mentioned, we are also able to to provide you know some screen printing electrode for for yeah conductivity measurements. So, and that's to I mean to allow customer you know to accelerate their the development um, in patch. That's all for me. You're still just to, okay. just yeah. to stick with you, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, just stick with you. Uh, the question uh, come coming in, uh, what are the common user requirements when it comes to the uh, production or development of sensors? It's, Sorry, a, it's a huge, what are the common user requirements when it comes mm -hmm. to the development or production of, of sensors? It's a big question. Okay. So I would say there, there is no typical so user requirement because we serve a lot of different applications. So I just mentioned 
now uh, um, specific applications of cardiac monitoring, but every customer is, uh, is, is coming with a different request. So that can be also EMG, that, that can be so SPO2 um, sensors. I mean, so that's a, that, that, that there is a lot of different requests. So I cannot say we have quite a standard catalog of requests. But uh, what is pretty common so um, um, is, um, is a requirement about the wear time. So that's uh, that's something that needs to be specified at the beginning because it has so huge uh, consequence on the on the product uh, development. So I would say so um, wear time, stretchability, um, requirement about transparency, um, conductivity. So some customer come with some specific uh, requirement on the on current level, for example, uh, waterproof or not waterproof. So so. Yeah, I would say that's 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 quite standard, but uh, um, then we 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 need I mean so to deep dive into you know the, the requirements or to um, to really customize the solution so there is no standard solution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, um, Jens Kaus, uh, Jens number one, as we were introduced. Uh, you're you're deeply involved in this, uh, trying to find the efficacy and. Um, uh, possibilities for use uh, in a clinical setting. What are some of the roadblocks or some of the hurdles that still need to be solved in order to make these devices uh, more able to fulfill their goal of relieving uh, an overburdened nursing staff, uh, clinicians uh, in a population that's aging and consuming ever more uh, medical uh, supply in, in countries? Yeah, thank you. So I, I think um, we had a drawback some years ago regarding the wearable technologies. Eh? Um, when every startup was coming up and saying we can measure this vital and that vital, and uh, but not with the precision required and not with the clinical studies which are uh, are a proof that it's uh, uh, working. Today, everything I think regarding development, we have the, the, the technologies ready. Uh, what is missing a little bit is really to think about how to integrate this as well into the workflow. For example, at the hospital or uh, how the people are using it. So that's one of the reasons why um, today already in, there is a domain which is not medical, but consumer health where it's already well established this uh, this different wearable devices, but not medical certified. But making the step really to help to reduce the healthcare costs and making everything more efficient, I think um, those who are developing these devices they have to think about um, uh, yeah how it's really used in the hospital, and uh, that's good to have. Uh, uh, I would say Jens number one, the Eckstein, who is is, is in the hospital. <laughs> And and they are in the end using these these uh, devices, and that's very important to exchange with these folks because they um they are uh, really in in uh, to to deploy all these uh, technologies, and it's really important that um, you exchange with these people and know how it's um, how it's used in the end. So I do not think that it's a question of uh, uh, yeah. That the technologies are not ready. I think it's rather to think about the intended use and how it's used, and to have a seamless integration into the workflow at the hospitals or for the nurses, etc. That's where it's missing a little bit today. I think. Understood, uh, Doctor Jens Eckstein. Uh, I'll go away from number one and two because we're already confusing ourselves. Um, so right, right to you, as as uh, Jens just said, uh, as a clinician. And, well, and somebody who's deeply involved in, in multiple projects, I would imagine, on a day-to-day -day basis. When you're creating your own ideas or somebody comes to you either with a brainstorm or even a, a commercial, commercially viable, uh, available product, what are the thoughts that go through your head that say, okay, this might be efficacious for us or go away, this this does not make sense, it will not make sense. What are, what are some of those ideas that you have in your head when you're doing those evaluations? Uh, probably some ideas are better, or some thoughts are better don't share. <laughs> but uh, in general, we're very friendly and polite. And I think we, we, we really 
um, listen and talk to almost everybody that that approaches us because we are uh, the whole team is is really curious and and motivated to to know scout uh, new technology and um, and many thoughts have been touched by by uh, Jens Kaus already because um, very often it's not a technical issue you know especially in Switzerland there are startups and and and, and spin-offs from EDH that are that are technically they're brilliant but um, it's quite often that it's rather uh, surprising that they they have never looked at the field where they want to apply their research or their development it's it, it it's they probably never have seen a hospital from the inside and and that's that's um always surprising to me because they invest so much resources and devotion and 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 whatever into their product and then they come sometimes with a, with a pretty developed idea and say isn't that cool? And 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 then the the technical part in myself is says, yeah, yeah, wow, this is really super cool, but it's completely useless um, because uh, there is no such need. And um, and very often um, the 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 problems, the obstacles that they have to overcome, then we 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 can mention them normally within one hour. You know, people take ten minutes, and then my team is already getting nervous because they have so many points that they would like to address and 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 then in the end uh, we hopefully can provide a pretty good uh, feedback and and hopefully they can go that way and then then whenever we we think it is okay for our patients and there's an, an added value in, in our in in the work we do then we we are really um, super happy to to help uh, these companies to develop to develop their products but to mention very simple issues that are very often not thought of. One thing is that um, you talked to my colleague uh, about the the user requirements. Um, the users are patients normally, not the physicians. They should be users in the first time. So I my whole team is testing everything we get. But in the end, it's, uh, it's the patient using this. And um, then it is very important to know that there is no such thing as the patient but it's they are as different as all of us are. They so the male, female, whatever. They 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 have different skin. They have different weight and sizes, and and you have to to meet that requirements. Or you say this is only for uh, women of uh, uh, one seventy centimeters and 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 fifty kilogram and uh, gray hair. But but if you want to address it for all patients, you really have to develop for all the patients. And then it helps if you um, get them in the development phase in a very early phase that you really say, is that uh, something that you would use as a patient? Is that meeting your requirements or, or why doesn't it? What could we help? And then very often we are far away from the high tech components that Jens is developing, but very much into uh, usability, UX design um, and so on. So So it's really... How can I charge this variable? You know, if it's a micro USB port, there's no 95 year old person that will use it because they will never uh, match the, the the right spot to put in this plug, and they will rather destroy the the, the plug. Um, super simple things like that. And then the the last part that I would like to add that we think about and that's super important for a successful implementation is. Uh, as Jens Kaus already said, you have to look on the side where you want to deploy your product. And 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 uh, if I would go to the nurses and say, hey, there's something that is super cool, we would love to use it, but it's about 30 minutes more work every day for you. I mean, mm -hmm. they will stop listening immediately or they will even throw things at me. Probably not because they, they like me, but it's it 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 is it is not doable. So so your your onboarding of your product should bring uh should free time should fasten up the things should should probably be fun or whatever but you should think of that so so it's not only the, the the kind of sensor and the algorithm behind it but it probably would be cool if you can onboard a variable with a scanning app and and it already does another job for you and so you save 10 minutes per day that's cool and um and and this is for example why I have a, a nurse scientist in my in my team and he really can tell me exactly the needs of the of the nurses 
um, even though I'm working in the hospital, but I, I'm not a nurse. So, so I think it's very often uh, helpful to to speak to the profession that you that you want to be involved in all your process after that. And then it's simple things like like UX design and and, and UX testing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, staying with you just for a second, I'd be interested to know. Um, now sensors are of course everywhere, but. I'm I'm imagining you're using some standalone products or systems that have really found their way into your processes within the hospital that you could say today they're irreplaceable or, or are a true benefit to your staff and patient. Do you have any examples off the top of your head of what you're using on a day-to-day -day basis from a monitoring monitoring perspective? What, we, what we're using in the hospital at the moment is really the old stuff, I would say. So, so coming from cardiology, they have always been about 10 years ahead. So, of course, we use kind of telemetry EKG or continuous blood pressure monitoring, but not the fancy stuff that, that Jens and CSEM developed. But but the, the old stuff with the with the compression cuff around your arm, and that is just inflating every 30 or 20 minutes. That's this kind of stuff that 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 is generally used. And then a lot we are it's really there in 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 our everyday practice but it's not part of our service unfortunately until yet i mean the the customers or the the, the patients just come with their results this is what jens mentioned the consumer market health uh, care uh, devices so so just this afternoon i got uh, uh, five ecgs from from a, a, a I can say it's from an Apple Watch, but it could have been any watch probably. And and uh, I I checked it and I I gave the result to the to the person that sent it to me, and they will be treated at the hospital. So that's something that would in in a couple of years ago that would have taken weeks or months even before this person would have realized or, or diagnosed her his and her, her um, issue. And now this is just something they they record it on their own. They send it. I I can see the data, not only the the the, the report of the watch. I wouldn't trust it, but I can see the the ECG in this case, and I can make a diagnosis. And I we we have some more communication, but it's clear what what's to be done. So we use that in our clinical practice. It's not involved yet, and everything that we use in case of wearable, where I think we have quite a, um, a pioneering position. We still use this in, in form of trials. So we did a lot of uh, atrial fibrillation detection trials, activity trials. Um, uh, we did respiration rate, uh, body core temperature rate, all uh, body core temperature, all these things that are super important. Um, but we still use that within trials because we said we only want to replace the standard care for our patients when we are sure that we at least match it or we are better than, than the standard care when we use variables. So for the moment or the time being, for example, we have a, a industry sponsored trial called SHIFT. And there we do monitor patients with variables on top of the normal care. And the only time where we, where we, almost made an exception for this was during COVID. But there we really prepared uh, wards to be monitored fully based on, on variables um, because we said we cannot be sure if we can handle this uh, pandemic um, uh, during a longer time uh, because we were afraid that we would lose, for example, nurses and doctors and so on. Then we said, okay, if they're not there anymore, then it would be better to have that at least um, uh, running on variables. But if I would give a, a, an estimation, I would say it's, a, it's another three to five years before we can switch in, in certain areas of the hospital to wearable monitoring and thereby improve the treatment of the patients and the safety, the patient safety and comfort. And, um, and then I think this will be the next step. And, and we are already preparing this in trials as well. We will always... Uh, send patients back home with monitoring as well because the transition from the hospital to their normal routine every day is um, is a critical phase as well and i think this is probably the the uh, for us after the hospital the next big step where we want to get this into the routine mm -hmm. sorry for the long answer why do you need to to wait three to four to five years so what are the limitations so currently the Super simple things as well. So, so for example, in the hospital, um, the sensors that we that we test or that we look at, 
um, very often uh, have a runtime of 24 hours. Um, and that's that's just not doable. We cannot, uh, if we want to manage, monitor patients 24 hours, we either have a system that we can leave on the patient continuously and charge it there, or we have to exchange it. Worst case, uh, we would have to take it off and take it back on two hours later. And that's just not, that doesn't make sense. I mean, if I want to monitor a patient, I want to monitor a patient and I don't have uh, extra stuff to charge variables. This does, it's not so the case. Um, other things is, for example, when we test variables that say on their homepage, um, uh, they monitor sleep, respiration rate, oxygen saturation, and everything. The we are always excited. The first thing we do is we test it. Uh, with the last one that we tested that said they monitor respiration rate on a medical grade, 50% um, of the values were correct. 50% were not. This is, uh, this is not close to acceptable what we want as a standard and how I can convince my, my colleagues as well. And, um, and so we are, we are, as I said, in, in, in trials, so, so with the consent of the patients and, and with uh, added stuff, for example, that really takes care that nothing goes wrong, we do that already for years. But before we can say the University Hospital Basel is using variables for medical purposes as a standalone tool, um, it's it's not there yet. What uh, you know, depending on liability, uh, on on, on the, uh, reliability, and and on on the the kind of of uh, medical care that we want to provide. But you can convince me if you have something that is much better, we will be happy. We even buy these devices. We we don't get them for free. We really invest in them and then we test it and, and we are really on the search. But um, in the end, we even think about building a sensor on our own because we really want to have something that is um, meeting the standards of a hospital and the patients so that they really feel comfortable wearing it. And um, unfortunately, uh, with all the sensors we tested, there always has been something considering data privacy, considering battery runtime, considering the reliability of the values, that that was just not not acceptable. Probably we were too strict, but I, 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 I think, as Jens said, the technology is there. So it's not that you have to develop something completely new, but you just have to assemble it in the right way and put it in the right infrastructure, I would say. Well, we have a large audience uh, attending this talk from a commercially motivated trade fair in medical technology. So I, I assume your uh, inbox is about to blow up with people pitching new ideas. Super cool. We do that. <laughs> uh, Steve, uh, representing uh, somebody deeply involved in industry, uh, the topic of sustainability and how healthcare well, let's say healthcare's role and uh, proportion of resources consumed by healthcare in various countries comes more into focus. How is your company dealing with issues of sustainability and not only from a communication perspective, but through an actual doing perspective? It could be incredibly wasteful, this massive amount of R&D and let's call these technologies possibly even disposable, high-end technology disposables. Um, how are you dealing with that? What, what are you offering to the market? Yes, um, I would say so, because as you mentioned, so we have different markets. So uh, um, so currently, uh, that is not the main concern on the for, for, for the healthcare industry, I would I would say so. Uh, the, so currently, the, the healthcare industry is more focused on performance. So having so a product that works. So I mean, uh, and that are really yeah, reliable. So um, that uh, that have good performances. Uh, it's so the, the the concern about so product sustainability is um, just starting. So I would say, uh, but for the other markets, so because we are serving, for example, so the the, the payment market and other, we are already anticipating uh, some uh, product change. So we are, um, for example, offering some uh, um, uh, recycled plastics so um, to be integrated into the into the, the payment payment card, for example. So. We are already working on that, so on the uh, for the the flexible uh, the flexible printed circuits, and um, and so I'm I'm looking forward also to 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 have some more uh, um, choice for for materials so, uh, for adhesives adhesive step because as I mentioned so we are also using adhesive step to to stick onto the skin so wearables. 
uh, I hope so. Um, those company providing so the the, the data zip steps so we, we'll provide more, you know, so uh, bio source or, or recycled so product. But it seems that's not the case at, at the moment. So uh, so so there there yeah there are two in in fact so there are really so um, two tracks. I uh, yeah I would say so. For the flexible uh, printed circuit, we are really um, um, uh, trying to offer, you know, so alternative solution. But for the healthcare, there are uh, less uh, choice in terms of materials because they also need to be biocompatible, you know. So there are also some limitations. So it's a, uh, and it's really also for for those uh, components, so um, uh, substrate providers. That's also. Uh, um, a kind of niche market in comparison to to the to the other markets. So I think they they put more effort into other other markets at the, at the moment. Right, and that's the paradox with with healthcare. Uh, the the patient yes. as the customer or consumer, they're not at that stage uh, in their lives, possibly not as concerned with environmentalism as uh, does the device work. Is it accurate? Uh, what yes. are the reactions? But um, um, the my companies please. also. I mean, so there. Are, so the the. I mean, so there. Are, so the systemic topic on the product itself, and then about the all manufacturing, and we are also, you know, uh, putting in place, you know, some some actions so to be uh, to 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 brought to produce in a more sustainability uh, way. Mm -hmm. So for energy, we use solar energy, and so so there. Are, also some you know some uh, some effort on that. So not only mm -hmm. about the product, but on on, on the manufacturing perspective, yeah. Exactly. Uh, Jens Kaus, uh, you appear to me to be a, a bridge builder between uh, the raw technology, people with great ideas, but possibly not a lot of experience, and those that are responsible for actually making it work and be accepted in the market. Uh, what advice could you offer um, a young gun or a, a young company, people that are just spitting out idea after one after another, in order to, to make a efficacious product to engage with clinicians, bring it to market, and possibly within your institution, you have, let's say, a, a success story where all the steps were followed more or less correctly, and they really have a, a, a profitable, uh, efficacious product to show for it. Well, the the, the message here is always uh, the same as for every startup, they even, uh, we could say, to, to have, think first of all, um, what are the customer and what is the target behind where uh, what you want to measure uh, so really to think about the intended use which normally for a medical device you always have to define at the very beginning and to think about how to integrate this as well into the workflow then afterwards and um and uh yeah regarding the the target customer then to have the business frame so it's uh, always a little bit the, the, the three same questions coming up and uh, before you're launching yourself. And that's um, what we see very often uh, being in contact with startups uh, very often so that then um, either the one part or the other one is 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 missing. And that's what, um, yeah, what is the, the baseline for, for every business in principle and even more for the, for the medical devices, um, I think. Mm -hmm. Do, looking down the road, um, you have your finger on the pulse uh, without a doubt. Which specific technologies do you see playing the most important role or could benefit most uh, in the coming years uh, in a clinical setting? Well, it's not only in a clinical setting. So I, I really think, well, in the past, we have to see, uh, well, we have the big issue of the, the rising healthcare costs. So this, this is really, uh, this was a little bit driven as well by technologies, but you do not have to forget our healthcare system is really uh, in Europe, uh, really good, and uh, it has a price. That's normal. Uh, that's the reason why everybody is getting older. Um, but today, I think really we have tools available to reduce the healthcare cost. As uh, Professor Jens Eckstein already mentioned, if uh, yeah, if um, one patient has uh, undergone a, a surgery and then afterwards sending back home, you have. Uh, um, many tools available today which you can use then afterwards is the remote patient monitoring tools uh, where we have to follow up as well and I really think working to all all uh, stakeholders together so this means the companies the 
the caregivers, the, 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 the academia, the politics, and as well the user as well, because as well the user can do something. And um, we, we really want to, yeah, to give the patient in principle the tools to look after his own health. And I think today we have everything uh, to reduce these healthcare costs and we really have to do it fast because the big ones, the big tech, the GAFAMs, they are not waiting. They are pushing hard into this domain. And if we in Europe cannot, yeah, reduce this mistrust against this uh, data, which we are always sharing, I think we will uh, have some issues in, in the near future. And it's really better that we take over um, the guidance ourselves and pushing all together as well with the politics to really um, push forward this digital transformation of the healthcare system in order to reduce the healthcare costs. So we have everything ready for that. Excellent. Dr. Eckstein, to you, basically the same question, but from your perspective, is there uh, an issue or a problem, uh, something that you know could be groundbreaking, just really take care of a lot of the issues uh, in staffing or in monitoring within that within the hospital that you have not yet seen a solution, kind of an appeal to research and development to come up with a system to solve X? No, I think that that what Ian said before, the, the, the technology is there. It's it's not something that you need a complete new system. You, you need, mm. that's a lot of psychology, I think, a lot of, uh, of trust. I mean, uh, we just made a whole symposium on that because we said trust. I think is the basis for 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 the 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 um, implementation at a hospital or in, in healthcare. Anyhow, I cannot use something that my patients don't trust or my colleagues don't trust. And and to earn trust takes some time. That doesn't excuse that 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 some developments are probably too slow. But we have to show that this is not a, a game and it's not purely about business, or not, but it's about health of our patients. And, and this is why we really have to be convinced that this is something that is well-tested, well-reliable, and is for the good of our patients. And I think this is something that that has to grow. And then personally, you know, what, what could we need? We could need more stuff and more resources, of course. But I, I think sometimes in if, you, if you talk to funding agencies, um, in healthcare, they are normally used that you always have some primary results already. And if you talk about innovative stuff or innovations where it has never been tested in healthcare before, then it's very hard to come up with this. And, and then it's, uh, it's, we lose a lot of time before we can get at least some basic support for, for some of our projects, which, um, which is sad in its way, but, but we, we, we are not. It's not that we run out of, of ideas and, and topics, so so we are very busy in the end of the day anyhow. And um, and we are very happy that we get such great, I don't say that because it's my employer, but I'm really convinced, I'm really happy that we get a lot of support from the university hospital, because I think for a hospital, this is not given always that you, that you really um, get support for things that don't pay off immediately, but, but, but we really invest in the future of, of, of these de developments and in in, uh, our patients. And, um, and I'm very happy to work at such a place. This is probably why I'm there past decades already. A good message. And I'm, I'm sure they're happy to hear that. <laughs> I don't know if they hear it, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure the audience is so large, there must be a few. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Christelle Roblin, um, you are, uh, your company is attending the Medica this year, uh, yeah. also presenting within the uh, Medica Connected Healthcare Forum. Mm -hmm. What's your message there? What are you hoping to achieve? Um, this conference, so we 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 uh, we intend so to 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 present some uh, innovation in, in, in wearable sensors. And we will showcase uh, some new concepts, you know. So I hope so. <laughs> it's exciting for for the audience. So yeah. So we will present some some new concepts. So in, uh, in, in stick to skin wearable. So um, mm. and uh, we will showcase also so more, you know, proof of concept on our booth. So we are we have a booth on the on the wearable pavilion uh, in the old twelve. So and uh, I mean so. I'm really excited, you know, to exchange with uh, some potential partner because I mean, so uh, we cannot achieve uh, the all development, so the full development, you know, of uh, of uh, 
of a wearable sensor, we need partners um, yeah, from research organization, for example, and, uh, and from other industrial players. And, and I'm looking forward you know, to exchange with this potential partners so, um, at, um, at Medica. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, we look forward to it as well. Those are always well attended, uh, kind of a, a heartbeat of, uh, of the, the most cutting, cutting edge technology uh, presented at the Medica. Yes. Uh, we this, are, this, this, please. Yes, sorry. I mean, so this field is really exciting. So because, so, I mean, so we are, um, we are, I mean, so there are a lot of potential, you know, applications so beyond cardiac monitoring I was presenting uh, and, and CGM, that's also another wearable sensor. Uh, there are yeah, much potential application, and I feel so the, the, the field is really exciting. So uh, there are a lot, lot of different product development to do. So, and uh, yes, we just need to connect. <laughs> And, uh, and, and, uh, and, and then, yeah, so the technology is there. We just need to connect, in fact, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, that's a, a perfect segue to my closing. Uh, we are uh, actually a, a perfect landing uh, right before the hour here. Uh, speaking of connecting, um, we do have uh, our final uh, Medica deep dive uh, coming up on 3rd of November at uh, 11 o'clock a.m. Central European. So it is a time change from uh, the other events. Uh, a corollary uh, uh, topic of telemedicine and how remote treatment can improve care. Uh, so please join us for that. There should be a lot of crossover from this audience to that. Uh, and also uh, the Medica this year in Dusseldorf uh, from the 13th through the 16th of November. Uh, as we just heard, it's important to connect, uh, to exchange and develop new ideas to bring healthcare forward. So if you're on the fence about attending, please do. It's always great conversations and, and great impulses to receive from that event in Dusseldorf. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, this talk is available uh, after the event and shareable online. So please, if you do have colleagues that you think could benefit from this talk, uh, feel free to, to share the, the recap uh, uh, event uh, from this Medica deep dive. Thank you for joining us and we will see you next time or in person in Dusseldorf. Thank you very much. And thank you all to the panel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. It was my pleasure. Bye bye.